All right, on to the AMA. Uh, so far, I haven't seen any questions for us except for a couple little things up. Uh, Deanna has suggested that we probably should have done the absolute worst versions of Monopoly because it's April Fool's. You know what? There's a couple things. For one, um, people may actually ask this question. So I wanted to have, I when I came up with the idea that, oh, you know what? I'll review Monopoly. And I'm like, eh, just reviewing Monopoly's name. Wait, I'll do the best Monopoly or the worst Monopoly. And I'm like, you know what? The best Monopolies is something someone will Google. Someone will Google what's the best version of Monopoly, and it would be awesome if my website came up. Yep. So for, that's one reason I want to take it serious. The other is, right now, I don't know, read the room, right? Is is this really the April Fool's? You want to be making lots of stupid April Fool's jokes. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do an April Fool's thing, but you know what? I'm going to take it seriously. I'm, I'm going to put actual information out there. These are Monopoly games that I would be more than willing to try. Any of these games, if someone can bring them out to a Windsor game night once we're allowed to go to those again, I will happily try all of them. And I'll do up a full review and then tell you if I was right that they belong on this list. Uh, and we actually, you know what? I, I We probably would have put something... Possibly even put Ms. Monopoly in there, and yet one of our patrons has uh, recently been enjoying it with his daughter. So you know what? Yeah, there's something for everybody. Yeah, I, that one I don't know. What when <laughs> I saw what at least what I saw of Ms. Monopoly did not seem good. Like the 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 Monopoly from Millennials looked absolutely horrible. The Monopoly socialism looked even worse. But yeah, I'm sure we could have done the worst. I, I didn't even bother looking on Board Game Geek because there's probably just a whole bunch that were just rated one. Yeah, there's actually uh, there's Monopoly Cheaters Edition is in print right now. It's See, that's actually, supposed to be pretty good. It's actually rated 4.8 on uh, Board Game yeah, Geek. That, that's above four. That's that's better than some. Yeah, I think the, the one I, one of them was like five. But yeah, it's like fake a die roll, steal some bills for the bank, skip out on rent. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And then there's handcuffs. Yeah doesn't sound like a board game night to me it sounds like a different kind of night uh <laughs> there's a there's a pizza monopoly right now too that's on the hasbro website uh that's like in a pizza there box are, there are so many like there's every city in the world has yeah. a, an opoly there's every breed of dog because a bunch were on sale at one point like dash hound opoly and all this and it's just the same game with the rethemed renamed um rename properties right yeah that's all you have to do is rename the properties and you got a new version of monopoly so and actually i'm looking at this monopoly pizza game right now and it looks a lot like the uh kids version that i got from uh yeah it's i don't the nsa and the pizza one may be discontinued because she's been seeing it in clearance oh it's still on hasbro's website that's why that's yeah. the only reason i know about it yeah warhammer 40k monopoly exists well, i'm not sure which which that I'm one sure. when it came out i was like wow in the deep dark future, there is only rent. Like <laughs> I don't know. Unless there's a way to attack other players, that's not a 40k game. There's I no was chaos. really disappointed. If there's no chaos. Like, there's no point. Yeah, <laughs> I got the the Star Trek or Star Wars. Sorry, Star Wars. When Episode One came out, they released this Monopoly version with this 3D board and metal miniatures and all this stuff. And I really thought it was going to have some actual Star Wars element. And there was, like, if I remember, instead of chance cards, there was, like, light or dark side cards. And you could pick between them. But, like, that was it. Like, there, right. there it was 99.9 .9 straight up Monopoly. And, and one little stupid rule to make it better. Whereas, like, the Jedi's Path version of life, whenever the path branches, you choose light and dark side. And if you fall to the dark side by the end of the game, even if you got to the end first with the most money you lost, because you had the most dark side. I'm like, there you go. Like, it's the game of life. It's still everything that the game of life is. But at least there's a Star Wars element. There's a push your luck element. Of course, the dark side pass give you more money and make it quicker. But if you overdo it, you lose at the end of the game. And I'm like, see, that's cool. It's game of life with a cool Star Wars theme. Yeah. The, this one was not. Well, I mean, I suppose like Star Trek shouldn't even be able to have a Monopoly version technically. Because uh, they're post, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's... Post scarcity, right? Everyone has everything <laughs> yes. they need, unless you're doing the Picard version, uh, where apparently they've gone back to having scarcity in the. Uh, I don't know. They say version. that about Star Trek, but Deep Space Nine was all about the Latinum. There's all kinds of financial transactions. Yeah, but going that was there outside the Frankie. that was outside the Federation, right? That no, was they're on, in the Federation. They're on the border. Yeah, that's the thing. They were on the border, so the the the, yeah, the other races had scarcity, but you know. Uh, uh, Ryan's point out the ring moving around the board in Lord of the Rings Monopoly is an interesting way because it ends when it gets to the end. That, makes that sense. is one. That, that's one that like there were others that were on this list. Like I did the top five, but as I kept going down, like the next one was a Pokemon Johto edition. If I had done the top six, 
but I know nothing about that. I would have had to read up. I, to be honest, I had to read up on most of these right. to know that, like, I had an idea what you do in Monopoly deal, but I had no idea what made Monopoly gamer different. I, I watched lots of Hasbro videos today. To, like I said, I did real research on this. There you go. All right, come on, people. It's supposed to be an AMA. Give us All questions. Right. We're well, still we talking questions. about Monopoly because no one's asked us anything else. <laughs> we, got, we got a question uh, stacked up here. So Danielle has asked us, board games where the goal wasn't to win. Basically, is there a no-win condition where you just decide that you are done? Or what is a board game with an end state that is not a victory for any player or the group as a whole? So alternate victory conditions. All right, this is one that I am hoping the chat can help me with. So I tossed this one in here because Daniel last. I was hoping Daniel would be in here tonight. Must be busy tonight. I do see Mitch see in the is. chat room. All right, maybe she came up with some more. So this was a conversation we had on Twitter that I thought it'd be in, worth talking about because I'm hoping maybe Sean can think of some too. I had a whole, I had a really hard time. Like the the whole thing is a board game. The definition of game, there is a win condition. That's what makes it a game, right? That's that's part of. So like almost every board game I play has a win condition so there were a few i thought of so one example is um tales of the arabian nights now this is a house rule though technically you set a threshold at the beginning of the game and i can't remember what the two are but there's two pillars of things and i don't remember they're diametrically opposed pillars and you set like you have 20 points and you can set one to eight and one to 12 and as soon as one of those hits the top you win like the game ends but the game is really a which way adventure where you're moving around a map. It's a whole Sinbad Arabian Nights thing where you're running into the Jinn and you're getting cursed and you're going on pirate raids and all this neat stuff. And it's, you see a beggar, how do you approach them? And you can say, I approach cautiously. And then you look up that on a grid and it tells the player next to you to read a passage out of the book. And it's like, oh, the, the whatever, the, the beggar is actually a prince in disguise. And because you approached him cautiously, he sends you on a quest to go do a thing. And then you go do the thing and you collect a counter and one of those two things goes up. And like, you can play this game until you're bored. Like, and that's how most people play it is, you know what? We're going to sit down at 6 p.m. and we're going to play till midnight and we're going to tell an awesome story. And that's what the game's all about. It's all about the experience and the story you tell because you can't game this. You can't game the system. Like, yes, when he tells you to go get the thing, you could go a different direction. But really, like, it's not, it's not high strategy. It's not high tactics. It's all about the experience. So that's one of them. Um, the other thing we came up with is party games. In general, most party games have a scoring system, and most of them we throw them out. Like, I think our group is one of the only groups I've ever met in the entire world that actually managed to go through the scoring round in Telestrations. And I don't know why we even do it, but there's a whole thing where you go through and everyone votes on which of the ones was the best guess, and then someone gets a point for the best pitcher. And someone... Every time we played, we've done it with points. But I know most people out in the world just play Telestrations until you're sticking to playing Telestrations, or until everyone's had a chance to be the start player. And then you end, you're just done. The, the goal was to play the game. The, it was the, the adventure of it. Um, similarly, we do that with uh, concept. Whenever I, we play concept, like the rule book says, throw out the, the rules, they're terrible. Actually, I think it says, if you feel you the need to use scoring, here's a system, but it's terrible. So we just play until we're bored. What we play is whoever guesses the answer is the next clue giver. And we'd swap spots at the table and... Then in the next person answers the question, becomes the clue giver. And then eventually you're like, well, you know, we've been playing for five hours. I've had enough. Uh, I see people talking. Uh, now, there's some some huge threads on this. And I just I just found a rabbit hole on Board Game Geek. Okay. Um, so Board Game Geek defines games as something that has a, a, a victory an end condition. condition. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and so the majority of definitions, of, of, of official definitions of games, have a quantifiable end point. Now, yeah. the argument is, is a quantifiable endpoint the same as winners and losers? Can you have a quantifiable endpoint that doesn't have winners and losers? Uh, for instance, Hanabi doesn't have winners or losers. It just ranks all the players. So yeah, but you technically, one of them is the highest ranked, but I guess. not necessarily the winner. I, I um, would say in Hanabi, if you get whatever the 24 points you won, yeah. you, uh, you beat Hanabi. Absolutely. Uh, another another uh, example is Duck Duck Goose. Duck Duck Goose okay. is a game that has an end when you're done. There is no winner or loser in Duck Duck Goose. You just keep playing. Does that? Ha I wonder if it originally had one, like uh, once one player has three points or <laughs> something. But you know, but that that like that that's a that's a game. Now some people might call that Duck an Goose. activity. It's sort of in the but that's, well, that's in the same a... way like you call you don't consider. Um, 
uh, some games, games. <laughs> yes. uh, so, uh, you know. Well, that's it. Some games are activities. Activities yeah, yeah. count. Like, the other one I was thinking of is, is um, like, role-playing games, obviously. Right? Yep. Role-playing games, there, there's no winner. So, like, you might finish the adventure. You might have a goal to get up to level 20. But, like, in specific, he was looking for board games. Yeah. Uh, so, there's my the, the overlap games, right? So, For the Queen. For the Queen does have an end. The the I don't know. I don't even think it's a spoiler because I think it tells you what happens. But the end of it is the queen is attacked. Do you defend her? There is no wrong or right answer to that, and the group doesn't win or lose. You just finish the experience. I can't think of a lot of other versions, though. Um, there are other, like, ten candles. I don't know if that's considered an RPG or a uh, board game. But again, it's you light ten candles while you're playing. It's a horror game. And once the tenth candle goes out, the game's over. Uh, another one uh, people talk about is uh, Bananagrams. Uh, yes, technically there are rules for winners and losers, but I was say, a lot of people a lot of people don't really seem to agree that those should exist. So, um, okay. uh, it's it's a better game without them, basically. Interesting. Um, no. So uh, I, what else? I don't know. Like anything, that I'm trying to think of stuff. Like I know, like I played Talisman Experience where we set up our own ending where we're like we must have hit all the adventure cards, but like it's all house rules, right? Yeah. I can't think of many games I bought where. There's, I just keep thinking there's got to be more, which is one of the reasons I wanted to discuss it tonight. Uh, Once Upon a Time, the storytelling card game. Again, yeah. it has scoring and a winner defined, but most people agree that you have to rule it without yes. it, and it's better. <laughs> yeah, any of those two. Uh, Rory Story Cubes yep. is another one, right? You roll the cubes, you tell a story. Um, that that definitely would apply. Um, there's that Icarus from Renegade Games. I haven't played that, though. It'd be nice if, if um, Jeff was in the chat room tonight, because I know Jeff's played it. That one sounded interesting, where you're like you're doing a whole fall of an empire. I'm sure there's more. I just, I just, there are not a lot. That's for sure. There's definitely not a lot of, like I said, the no, definition no, no. of a game. Most yeah. people's definition of a game is, is either there's a win condition or an end condition. That's what makes it a game and not an activity. What is the game we complain that is it's an activity and not a game? I know people say the game, Candy Land. but the game you can win. Like well, Candy, the, the, Land, Candy Land is the is the number one. <laughs> yeah, but that yeah, that's just because it's predetermined. There's yeah. there's no actual player choice once the deck's been shuffled. Well, sorry, you have a choice, but there's always an optimal choice. And if everyone just did the optimal choice, the winner is determined by the shuffle of the deck, not anything the players do. Right. That's completely different. That's deterministic, which is why it's uh, not a game to me because the players have no actual. They have so, the illusion of, uh, of choice. So, interestingly, I've actually got up right now the Board Game Geek game criteria. So, this is what determines whether or not you're allowed to be called a game on Board Game Geek. Okay. Uh, and uh, if, a solo, if a solo game, the player must make decisions to work towards victory. Uh, but again, it's victory. Uh, and, or, games generally need a point where someone or a group of persons has won or someone or a group of persons has lost, including cooperative games where the game wins. Uh, so they that basically eliminates drinking games, sex games, parlor games, yeah, pass, there you go. The, entertainment and passing time games are eliminated by that definition. See, I hadn't thought of those. There's all those those interesting dice games. Yeah. Our two-player <laughs> date night article has a few of those linked at the very bottom of it. So yeah, there's there's those games. We've had a couple of those. Yep. Uh, All right, what else do we have? Okay, so uh, next up, we've got a question from uh, Roger Malosh uh, joining us. And uh, thank you for the follow uh, on Twitch there, Roger. So awesome board, game in the arena, chat. board Game Arena is currently overrun, and I can't even log in yeah. most of the time. Now, I want to say one thing. If you pay, if you become a premium member, you can always log in. As a premium member, I get notices, and I get some slowdowns. Uh, they actually had a serious failure of their server host last weekend uh, that they actually went down, like the site went down uh, out of their control. But as a premium member, you get in first. So mm -hmm. uh, even when you can't get in as, as a free member, I'm able to get in and play as a premium member. But that being said, we don't all have money right now. Times are tough because we don't all have jobs anymore. Yeah. And, you know, the question is, what do you think of Tabletopia or the Steam board game simulator? All right, so one thing before we go to that board, it's cheap, isn't it? Board game arena, like three dollars Canadian or something a month or something like that, or three fifty, uh, maybe four, maybe most, four. Yeah, it's like under five dollars a month. So 
if you just want to be able to get in. Uh, the problem, I the problem is I can't answer this yet. So we've been asked. This is the most popular question we have gotten or yeah. seen on the internet, not necessarily even directed at us. Recently. Is how can I play games online? And my initial thought was everyone else has covered this. Like literally every gaming blog out there seems to have covered it. But obviously not everyone's read those yet. So this may be our topic for next week. The problem is Sean and I need to try more of them. Yeah. Um, one of the things I don't like is one of the ones, which I think is Tabletop Simulator on Steam, when it was released, was a platform. It was basically a 3D tool manipulation platform. It's a physics that, simulator. It's a yeah. So it like all the table was there and all the pieces were there, but it was as if the game was in front of you and you'd have to move the pieces. And part of that is developing the skill to do that in this VR and not like knock things over. Yeah. And if you watch the Steam preview for it, 90% of the videos are people flipping tables because that's one of the things you can do. No one seems to show off the game. Now I thought that's how it still was, and I have since heard from multiple people that people have now made mods where the game does stuff for you. It'll move things for you. It'll track things. It'll keep track of your score. It'll do all the things that like Board Game Arena does. Now, I haven't seen it. I tried a beta way back when it all it was was a simulator. Like, like that was it. It was this, to me, it, I, I would never yeah. do it unless I, I was forced to because it was the, like trying to manipulate the things was more work than it would yeah. be to play the game. It wouldn't be fun. And also, it's not cheap. I mean, you've got to buy the no. tabletop simulator, and then you also, in some cases, not all, but in some cases, have to buy the game content yes. as well. Uh, and then again, in some cases, the game isn't doing anything for you. You're still just doing there. all the math. It's just giving you the ability to play that game. Uh, yes. And I should also we should also point out, uh, as Ryan has mentioned in the chat room and weeks previous, none of these tabletop digital games are really accessible to a lot of people. Um, out yeah. there so they are yeah, not it, well designed for accessibility so the other one is tabletopia i've looked at tabletopia tabletopia to me just looks like a watered down version of tabletop simulator but again total caveat i i apologize in this case we are not the ones to answer this question at this time i don't know if i'm gonna go bother to go out and spend the money on tabletop simulator because it does cost money um I don't know if there's any way I can get a review copy. It seems like something I should be able to get a review copy of, but I don't know how, <laughs> like who, who to even write to get a Steam code for that. Um, what I do know people use it for, and Deanna's mentioning this in the chat, is both are known to be fantastic for pro prototyping because you don't need to make a physical game. You can make it all there. Right. And I follow Roger on social media, and I've noticed Roger's done that. Roger is a local game designer here in Windsor, and I've seen his physical games out at local events. And I've seen him sharing pictures of what he's created. I think it's in Tabletopia. And I got to admit, it looks impressive. Now, again, I think they're all just physics simulators in this case, but I could be wrong. It does look really cool. Uh, and Roger's mentioning he got it for $9.99, but I know that's a steal because right now, I think normal Canadian, Canadian price on Steam for Tabletop Simulator is, I believe, $21.99. Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd have to double check, but I know it's up there. Um, so so yeah, it, it does go on sale fairly often. Yeah. I, like I said they both look cool. I my, I don't know my recommendation. I can't strongly recommend either without trying them myself. There are a lot of free options though, and I you know what? Give me a second. I, I I'm not researching, but I am going to. At ten dollars, I would probably be buying uh, tabletop simulator. It is on my wish list. Uh, so if it ever gets down to ten bucks again, I probably will pick it up just to have it. But uh, how much are the games though? Well, again, that's the thing. There are a lot of there packs. are a number of free uh, options as well in the Steam laboratory, whatever they call their right. uh, their their area. But uh, but yeah, a lot of the the of course the, the pricey games are pricey. Uh, and again, they're between you know probably ten and you know four to five to ten dollars probably. Uh, yeah, I, see, I know I've a seen a couple for like little. nine bucks. Um, All right. So what I recommend are other sites. So we talked about Board Game Arena. There is also yukata.de, uh, which I did play on a little bit the other day, and it's it's Board Game Arena. They're all kind of the same, right? It's a web-based interface that does a pretty good job of recreating the look and feel of whatever board game you're playing. There is also Board Gaming Online, which is hyphenated Board Gaming hyphen online. There is, if you like brass, there is a site brass.orderofthehammer.com where all you can do is play brass. It's extremely well done. Like someone did a really good job making the game look like the game. Um, there's Spielby Web, which is another one. 
Um, Board Game Geek actually has a wiki that lists all online games with about 200 of them. Uh, there's Board Game Arena, Tabletopia, Bot La Joue, which is a French site, which I could never figure out even how to start a game, but I think you have to register, and I haven't done that yet. Uh, there's HappyMeeple.com, which hosts online gaming. Like, there are a number of options. The, two, the biggest ones are Yukata and Board Game Arena for free. I don't know if Yukata has been having the problems that Board Game Arena has as far as um, load. I was able to get on and play something fine, and I don't have a paid account there. So it's, it seems like less people have heard oh, of Yukata. them. Yes. Yukata, Yukata. Yeah. Yukata.de. I was uh, able to get in and jump in a game right away. And I, and I did just check uh, the premium membership on Board Game Arena is currently $34.80 a year or $2.90 a month. Yeah, so, see, that's pretty cheap, right? Like, yeah, it's it's I to, the, to not me, wait in line if, you, if you've got continuing. I play fourteen games at a time. I couldn't mm. say no to giving them money, and I'm I'm happy to give them money. So, so yeah, Ryan's noting for accessibility. I I again, I wouldn't expect. Much. I, I wouldn't it's, hold my breath for any. What, what do you call it? Sprite based graphics? Like it's just, it's all the same system that Board Game Arena uses, yeah, right? It's, like it's all it's all very graphical. Click on things, get things done. So I don't know, like uh, I'd have a goal. I don't know if it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I have a goal to um, Sean and I to review some of these sites and literally recommend the best <laughs> of them. It's just finding the time to do it and possibly the money, yeah. which is something I don't know if that's something we want to open up our budget to or not. We'll see if, if maybe we buy tabletop tabletop simulator and stream some stuff on it on Fridays or something. So then it's at least more worth it than one blog post topic. Yeah. Well, Something again, and it's one of those things. Well, we'll we'll both, uh, you know, if I see it on sale, I'll I'll let us know, and we'll yeah. we'll figure it out at that point when it. See the other problem too for us. Now, this is a personal problem. Well, not a personal problem, but this is something that sucks about Steam. Is the Steam family account doesn't work with any of the board games. So if Deanna also wants to play with us, which is what we're going to want to do, like if I want to play online with Deanna, we both have to buy the game. So I got to buy two copies of Tabletop Simulator, and I got to buy two copies of the mod pack so Deanna and I can play, which is terrible. Yeah. It, it just it's it's a horrible like i get why they do it because it'd be too easy to just give out codes to your friends or whatever if it wasn't if there was some way to share accounts but like they have a family account but we have yet to find a single game the family account actually works on yeah no it's uh it's an issue So that's another limiting right i mean so even, even, even board game arena you were forced to buy yes. have a premium account in order for both of you to play because they don't mm -hmm. want people uh cheating within the same IP yeah, address. they don't want to have someone to have two windows open and play two different players, which, man, I can't believe people even do that, that they have to have a rule for it. Well, I mean, because they have tournaments and stuff, people are... I know. Yeah. I whenever get it. There, whenever there's competition, there's someone willing to cheat. But yeah, I, I do want to I do want to check it out. And maybe it'll be by next week. I don't know. Like I said, it's definitely a topic that's still hot. I get notifications on my phone every day of some other website yet again posting, how do I play online? And some of the answers are terrible. Like, oh, well, they don't know. Like, Board Game Maria is a fantastic. They don't know the free action. Or maybe they're getting paid to promote the other sites. I don't know what it is. But I'm like, people are like, oh, you can play all these games on Steam. I'm like, everyone knows about Steam. Like, yeah. who knows about BotleJou.com, right? Like, that's kind of why I was hoping for. Yeah. Uh, so, uh... But yeah, Roger, I, I know. you. Instead of buying a pint of beer every Wednesday, you know, <laughs> once a month, you buy one less pint of beer. <laughs> I know you're not going out to easy mode anymore. But in and, and you buy an account on board game arena that's what i would recommend in your case now that one you won't be able to put your games on there is no user content on board game arena it is it is all done well there is the a developer there is an api that can be worked with but i don't know how you access it so, yeah like it's it's not part of the basic service right yeah. it's not like it's yeah hey man what you've done so far looks fantastic the stuff i've been seeing on my facebook feed looks really good <laughs> Oh, hey, we should actually create a group on Board Game Arena. I didn't realize there were groups. Uh, Ooh, just, I didn't know we could do that. Neither did I. I'm just all of a sudden, I'm like, find a group. Oh, you can do groups? Maybe we should have a tabletop bellhop group. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll drop links to all those on. Like, I again, I don't reckon, necessarily recommend all of these because I haven't tried them. But I will drop all of the, the links. I dropped them in the chat here, but I'll drop them in the show notes for anyone that has to be listening to this later for a bunch of these online game places. Uh, and I just noticed that Board Game Arena actually has merchandise. I, I might consider buying a coffee mug because it's like go. 16 bucks Canadian for a coffee mug that has the Board Game Arena. And I mean, 
We pimp them all the time. They aren't they're not sponsors. I give them money every month. They, they should be paying us. They, they really should be paying should us. us Except right week. now, they have gone from f an average of yeah, 5,000 users to 15,000 users and up to... Tw actually, no, they're sorry. They've hit 20,000 users Active, since, yeah. since this has happened. Um, they are not hurting. <laughs> no, they don't need our help. But yeah, we've been we've been advocating from them since uh, yeah. Eric Franklin pointed it out to me quite a while ago now at this point. All right, what do we got next? So next up, uh, we have a question from Rick Wayne. Anyone know of a game similar to Betrayal at House on the Hill, fantasy setting, good for teenagers? Okay, first off, Rick may be living under a rock or doesn't have a local game store, but there is a game called Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, which is a D&D retheme of Betrayal at House on the Hill. So right there is the number one answer. There is literally a fantasy version of Betrayal at House on the Hill. <laughs> So that would be my number one recommendation. Um, I don't know if Rick hadn't heard of that yet, which is possible. Not everyone watches board game media the way we do. Um, the other recommendation that I had immediately upon hearing this were the D&D games. So Dungeons & Dragons put out a series of board games that started when 4th edition of Dungeons & Dragons was popular still. It was still the, the going edition. And they now call them the, the, the Adventure Series, or the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Series. The first was called Wrath of a Shardalon. Uh, there was also, uh, there's a Ravenloft one, I own it, Castle Ravenloft, there was Legend of Drizzt, there's Temple of Elemental Evil, um, probably, I think there's one based on one of the newer ones. So since 5th edition came out, they interestingly kept putting these board games out, which are still derived from the 4th edition rules. So they still have like, uh, like they, they have powers and stuff very similar to 4th edition. This is a very much a board game, um, which very similar to Betrayal House on the Hill, you randomly build the dungeon as you're playing and you have some kind of goal and it's scenario based. No scenario, not campaign, which we talked about many times on the show. I'm not going to get into the differences here, but it's a scenario based game where you start off on one tile and you're going to explore the map and try to get to whatever the end goal of the scenario is. It's a cooperative game. So you're all working together against the game. Unlike Betrayal House on the Hill, there's no betrayer. There's no hidden traitor that's going to go against you. Now, these games are really solid. Also, if you are into role-playing at all, this is a great source of dungeon tiles and cheap miniatures. They're all unpainted, but you get a slew of miniatures in here and some really cool-looking dungeon tiles. So that is, if you don't have it or aren't interested in Betrayal of Alder's Gate, check out the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Series games, which there are it's a slew of different ones. Um, I'm not even sure what the newest one is. That's something maybe Sean will Google it because I try not to Google while we're doing AMAs. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Mountain Papa, one of our new followers, says, uh, after Gloomhaven, what is a cool two-player legacy game? Two-player legacy game. I've heard Aeon's End Legacy is pretty good. Uh, personally, my next one I would want to play is Clank Legacy. I don't know how great that is two-player. I would Google that one. I would I would look that one up on Board Game Geek. Check the recommended players just to see if it's not might not be recommended with two players. Um, Pandemic plays extremely well with only two players, uh, especially if you each take on two roles instead of one. Uh, Pandemic Legacy is still it's what the number two game in the world, so it's the one step down from Gloomhaven. Though personally, I don't recommend playing that right now with what's currently doing in the world i prefer my gaming to be a bit more escapism and i don't need to be reminded of what's going on in reality while i'm playing but maybe when this all blows over you might be interested in looking into pandemic legacy i've heard charterstone is fantastic and plays good at low player counts i haven't played that one myself um trying to think of risk legacy i would not recommend with only two players i don't even know if you can uh, Lord of the Rings, Journeys in Middle Earth, uh, Tori and Kat, who we played Gloomhaven with, have recommended that at two players to say it plays really well. That's an app driven game where the app's going to tell you the story. It's cooperative. There are a lot. There are a surprising number. Now, I don't know if, you, if, if I don't think I call Lord of the Rings, Journey in Middle Earth a legacy game. though. sorry, that's a campaign game where your characters evolve and you play through it. But there's no legacy elements. There's nothing you rip up. There's no you can play through scenarios more than one time. Sorry, campaign based game. Uh, like I, if you were looking at campaign based games, I would explain it, ex expand it to um, Star Wars Imperial Assault as well. With two players, I would recommend playing with the app and playing the co-op mode. But you could also play one player plays the Empire and one player plays the Rebels. Again, no legacy element, but there's a full campaign. You play through 10 games to get through a whole campaign. You slowly build your deck and improve your characters. A fantastic game. Uh, and uh, so Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated uh, is listed as 
uh, well recommended at two players. So it's best yeah, at it's four, impossible. best at four, but but two and three players are both uh, well recommended. Um, All right. Well, Ryan pointed out that the games I mentioned, similar to Be Trail House in the Hill, do not have a hidden traitor. So if that's the aspect of Be Trail House in the Hill you like, not the exploration of the castle or or so the castle, the the house. If you like the traitor aspect and you want fantasy, I would recommend uh, Shadows Over Camelot. That is a Arthurian, so there is a dragon in it, so it's fantasy. It's a it is Arthurian where you are playing Knights of the Round Table and you are trying to defend Camelot that's being beset by all kinds of things. So you're, you're trying to find the Holy Grail. Uh, Lancelot is trying to, uh, sorry, you're trying to find the Holy Grail. You're trying to find Excalibur. Lancelot is fighting um, the Black Knight and there's a joust going on. And there is also a um, siege. There's a siege going on. So there's catapults attacking. And then there's the Normans and the Picts attacking. No, the Normans are Arthur. Who is it? It's the Picts and the Saxons, maybe? Yeah, I think it's the Picts and the Saxons and Arthur are the Normans. I'm messing up my British history. Uh, whatever. You're being attacked by both sides. And it's a card-driven game where you have to try to like deal with all these things at once. It's a really difficult uh co-op game at first when you first start playing it and then well the trick is that one of the players possibly is a traitor who's actually working against it and wins the game if camelot falls which is you know throws in the whole lancelot goes insane kind of thing into it for the myths but really solid i that used to be one of my favorite games to bring out the public play events because a lot of people in windsor that come up to gaming events role play for once so you get a lot of role playing in that game it's almost required because you're not allowed to talk about like gloomhaven you're not allowed to talk about what you have in your hand you have to you know role play it and talk, oh i'll go really quick or i'm gonna go fight the normans and i'm gonna need help at the end instead of saying hey i need a five card um plus the way the game works because on every turn the bad guys go then you go the bad guys go then you go you can drop out of the game and it doesn't affect the overall game and people can join in. So if you're playing with five players and then someone shows up new to the game night, it's like, hey, come here, take a character card. And then they're in for the next round and it works. But the it's not a legacy is, game. No, definitely not. Like, no, <laughs> this is going back to the Betrayal at the House on the Hill recommendation, yeah. not the legacy game recommendation. I would, the Styles Over Camelot is not a good two-player game. It doesn't work. Don't even try. I, it's got to be at least three-player minimum. But that's to, to throw in a fantasy game with a with a traitor element that a teenager would probably enjoy. I think they'd enjoy the role-playing aspects. They probably like beating up catapults. I don't know. I'm trying to think of me as a teenager, right? <laughs> they like dueling and, and doing the joust. Like, that would all be neat stuff at that age. It would have been neat to me at that age. Saxons and Picts. Yeah, the Normans are the... King Arthur is part of the Norman Empire or whatever. All right, well... All right. We'll we got any chance, so we're going to move on. I don't know. I think we're, I think we're going to be moving on. It looks like uh, things have quieted down. So what do we have this week? This is a pretty good match of topics, actually. So we basically yeah, defined what a game is. Oh, that, yeah. That'll be a useful one. We talked about what a game is. Talked a bit more about Monopoly games. We've got Escape the... Sword of Betrayal. I'm just looking for, yeah. for the show post later. All, All right. right, so one of the things, we're going to try to remember to do this regularly. We do try to do an Ask Us Anything, Ask Me Anything on the last Wednesday of the month. So our next one, assuming I don't forget, please remind me if it looks like I'm going to, and I start talking on Twitter about the wrong topic, on April 29th, we should be having another Ask Us Anything. Uh, this should have happened last week, and with everything going on, I literally just didn't even consider it <laughs> until we showed up, and I think it was Ryan in the chat room was like, isn't it an AMA tonight? And I'm like, oh, wow. Totally for but no. <laughs> but no. Uh, at any time, though, you can ask your questions. You don't have to be here live. I love it when you're here live because then we can interact and you can go, oh, I agree with this. I want this, etc. cetera. Uh, send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or hit me up on social media. All right. Well, uh, that, uh, that's it for our thoughts on our AMA this week. And again, always, you can head over to the blog at tabletopbellhop.com where you can find all sorts of gaming topics that we cover. And some of our AMA questions might even get turned into topics at some point. Yeah, some of these, if I can expand on them, I will do that in the future. 